Good day, everyone. Yeah, that's right. We're hanging out in my garage. <laughs> yep, yep. So uh, we're catching up with uh, doing some live podcasting, and I'm hosting a ski tuning party in my garage tonight. So I'm out here doing wiring and putting in heaters because it's kind of cold. I mean, I don't know. Is it cold? It's a little cold. It's a little cold. So this is our boy Brian Strausser of the Strausser Project. His voice has returned. Yep. So we're going to be doing a podcast today on my higher end audio to uh, reflect on the holiday season because you'll hear on this episode, Brian got to catch up with me and go up to New York City like I normally do every year with Harlem and and uh, and give back to the people on the streets and low income and make over 2,000 meals. And then he's got a backstory that I can't wait to share with you with another non-for-profit event that we got to do that day before Thanksgiving in Staten Island. So hang tight. I don't want to waste any time. We're going to go live here. And uh, you're welcome to hang with us. And I hope to be inspired by a little holiday spirit. So anyway, that's why I old garage. So that's why I call it this old garage. So anyway, <laughs> stand by. I'm getting comfortable. All right. Good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to another Little Fuel Show. So I'm having some new fun today as we're recording this because I'm bringing back a return guest co-host, a, a gentleman who's kind of become a bit of an ambassador for our Live the Fuel brand, and uh, got to hang with me. I talked to him on, about him on some recent episodes because we did some work together for Thanksgiving, and. Uh, so the purpose of this new podcast is to, I guess, talk around a lot of the inspiration around not-for-profit activities uh, that seem to increase around the holidays uh, since he and I got to share in two separate events uh, for, for this Thanksgiving 2018. So without further ado, welcoming back to the show with his return vocals, Brian Strausser <laughs> of the Strausser Project. Welcome Thank back, you, Scott. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, appreciate being back. It seems like it's been forever since we got to sit down and talk. Um, a lot of stuff's been going on. Uh, nice. As far as the, the voice comment, for those of the, the people watching or listening, um, we, we did this great event that you're going to hear about, and I had lost my voice almost completely about four or five days prior. It's now been a good week or so or more after Thanksgiving, and I'm, I'm literally just getting back to, to almost 100%. Uh, I was hoping to do a big, big podcast throughout that whole 24 hours of uh, fun that we did, and uh, unfortunately, my my voice thought otherwise. Oh, it was it was quite non-vocal. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if that's a term, but we're gonna use it. <laughs> yeah, I met I met a lot of people and uh, through that event through Scott, and it was great. Um, and I really didn't get to talk to any of them. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So the point here is that we get you enticed on the event. And then maybe you come back next year or the year after. You don't have to be as crazy as I am. I've been committed to uh, uh, Sister Mary Landing of Yes Solutions is the profit, not for profit that he's uh, hinting at. And our little team of volunteers is called the Street Corner Gourmets. And uh, she's such a sweetheart that when you show up and you hear her backstories, you kind of get a little inspired and then she hooks you up. And I've been going back for eight years straight, so that's how I spend my Thanksgiving uh, the night before. Uh, and you, you got to experience it full bore. You got to go all night with no sleep with me, did you? Absolutely. What do you think of that? Uh, good, good times. <laughs> um, definitely not going to be the last time I'll be there. Uh, you know, it all depends on how it works out with the family, but the, the nice thing is um, I don't have many family events going on from 9 o'clock at night till 5 o'clock in the morning. So. Uh, seems like hey, we, we went all the way to seven or seven thirty. <laughs> we hit the road at seven thirty. So, so you you kept going all the way. Yeah. We did step out for what an hour. And and I was sick as a dog, so I it yeah. might even be a slightly better experience when I'm not feeling so horrible. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, I got I got to give him props though. Strasser Project represented. Um, uh, he Brian Brian. I was like, all right, I love bringing noobs because. <laughs> He's only the third person that's ever come with me to this annual event. Uh, the last two were a friend of mine, uh, shout out to Charlie, and my fiance, Kristen. They both came the same year, and they did not return. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, it, it takes a special caliber uh, to want to uh, work with other fellow volunteers, uh, put in the sweat equity, so to speak. We didn't do too much sweating, but you are in a commercial class kitchen, and uh, you, I think, broke your personal record of washing more dishes than you ever have, right? 
Yeah, I, I didn't even want to talk about the dishwashing thing because just in case this gets back to my wife, but uh, I, I couldn't even tell you how many dishes I washed that day. For that well, night. it wasn't even just dishes. It was really, so this is commercial kitchen. This is the, the baking trays, right? How many baking trays? Those metal baking trays, dude. Because yeah. then we, we start using the ones you washed and they start coming back. It's like they never end. Yeah, it was never ending. <laughs> but that was my purpose, so. <laughs> yeah, I, admittedly, I wanted them to get a little taste of the cooking, but and you did a little bit of some of the rest, but you never know. Like, everybody just falls. If you notice this, you, you've, done, you've done years of charity work, right? And not the proper work as well. Correct. Would you say that people sometimes naturally fall into their roles? Yeah, I, I would say absolutely. And you're, one, one thing about myself, and I would say yourself also, uh, that you always come across when you're doing stuff like this is, you always get that group of guys or girls that are there to do it, but they don't really want to get into some of the dirty and the gross stuff. You know, when, I, when I'm there, if I'm looking around and there's, you know, it just was one of those things that one thing that wasn't being done or needed help was those horrendous dishes. So it <laughs> it's, uh, doesn't matter to me whether I'm decorating a pie or I'm scrubbing a pan, you know, it was the same thing it needed to be done. Yep. And uh, I'm, I'm like yourself, I'm pretty obsessive compulsive. So once I get into something, you know, it's hard to walk away. To ramp up the speed, and and uh, it, it was uh, it was some fun shenanigans. <laughs> yeah, you, you did have a couple of teammates throughout the night. Every time I was, it was funny because the one guy he, he's a real ball buster. He's always he's one of the family, the extended family of, of Mary Lanning. And um, every every time I'm passing by and I'm bringing dirty stuff to you, he's just like, yeah, you know, like don't you work or blah blah blah. He, he's a regular because he's part of the family, and I'm like, well, he does not. He, he knows that there's plenty of work getting done because somebody has to shuttle that stuff. Somebody has to go back, clean the stations, get the workstations ready for the next round of food that we're prepping. I mean, you and I got there after the turkeys this year. We had already shipped over 40 turkeys out of that kitchen that we do every year um, to a representative of the FDNY, uh, New York Fire Department. Uh, and he takes one of our rental vans and then drives all the prepped turkeys to all the surrounding FDNY firehouses, and they cook the turkeys in their kitchens in and around Harlem, while we continue running this volunteer kitchen all night long to prep all the side dishes and, well, I mean, well, this year we did a apple, giant vat of apple cider, right? I mean, it was like 40 gallons of cider in yeah. that. <laughs> Over, overfilled. Yeah, well, I, 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 well, I saw the <laughs> fill line. This was, you know, I make mistakes. Uh, there was the fill line. And the chef, chef was exhausted. Shout out to Chef Angelo, right? I yeah, mean, that, that dude. That, that guy, when he was leaving, he literally had, it looked like both hands were out scraping the wall, just trying to keep his balance to go down the hall to get out of there. I was worried about him driving home. I'm like, yeah. so, so Chef Angelo, um, out of respect for the uh, organization he works with, we don't talk about who hosts us and who lets us use their facilities because then everybody wants to get in there and that's not fair. So anyway, Chef Angelo is just amazing because he runs his team and his, his, uh, you know, sous chefs and, and the rest of whatever restaurant great kitchens, you know, have people wise all day. And they had served over 2000 meals to what they normally do that day. And then he has his team shut the kitchen down, do a quick clean through and then start cycling us in with our teams of volunteers as he frees up the workstations. Like, as you can tell, I mean, you were there and we don't really slow down. It's kind of like a consistent flipping through. What, what do you think of all that? Yeah, it was, uh, I think that's one of the coolest things about doing it. And I've seen you do it the past couple of years since I've known you. And, you know, doing, we, we met through volunteer work. Yep. Um, I love helping people. I love getting involved in, in almost anything I can. Uh, and watching that, seeing that, I, I, I also tend to go for the stuff that most people don't. You know, like when it's an overnight thing and no sleep, normally that's a huge turn off to people. It's more of a, a turn on to, to a nutball like myself. But um, we, we are fellow nutballs. To, yeah. to be there, and uh, I've, I even had different people, um, when they heard that I was doing it, saying, oh, yeah, yeah, I'd like to do that too, you know, you know, can you find out if they need more help? And I said, well, before, you know, i got to let you know how this is all going down, and we ended up getting I remember because you actually reached out to me again, you're saying, hey, so real quick, what are the full details of this again? And I told you, I'm like, be ready for an all-nighter. And then I noticed that whoever you were talking to kind of shifted their... Yeah, anybody that wanted to help me once they found out what we were doing didn't want to help me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and let, let's be real. Let's 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 shout out to people like that. I love the fact that they they at least said, "Whoa, that sounds cool. I do want to learn more." Because a lot of people don't even do that. Let's be real. And then I look at that those people too, and it's like, okay, well, okay, maybe this doesn't fit them.
but what if this inspires them? Kind of the back theme of this episode, right? What if hearing about this event or hearing about this activity inspires them to say, wait a minute, what can I do in my area? What can I do at a different event that fits my lifestyle, right? Yeah. I think that's part of this, right? It's not every event's gonna fit every single person. Yeah, exactly. And that's kind of why, like, one of the things really cool to see how this, how this whole thing kind of panned out was to be there and talk to the other volunteers and the other people and to hear what was going on, you know, the, the fact that it's been days of people cutting herbs and getting things ready and there's a whole group of people upstairs in this place uh, putting together things right down to kids decorating the boxes that the stuff went in. You know, everything was very was personalized. It wasn't yeah. just, uh, it wasn't even just feeding homeless. Like it was literally, you know, this, this woman puts every ounce of her soul into this thing and, and it's one thing to go out there and give somebody something to eat, which is outrageously amazing in the first place, but the fact that she takes it down literally to the microscopic, you know, every, every, every little ounce that goes into this, whatever's going on, it's very personal, it's, it's very serious business. Um, and, and that being said, also very fun, you know, mm -hmm. to be around these people and surround yourself by that, that kind of people. And, and having come into it, we came into it after a, another amazing event that we started in the morning um, sickness or not, you know, I was, I was so riled up that day. Didn't I was excited by that actually. Yeah. I mean, I've been doing street corner gourmets for years and real quick to close out on, on that note, um, real quick before we get into your, your, your background on this one, what was the most hardcore you, thing you learned about Mary from that night? What did you see? The, the, the number one thing that stood out for <laughs> she's me in her seventies people, she's in her seventies. She's been doing this event for over 47 years and go. <laughs> <laughs> she, she, I guess in the past at some point she might have gone home for a moment or whatever, and, and uh, but she, we were in there talking, it was getting really late, and, and uh, everything was still going 100%. She goes out in the street to do everything the following day, but she said she was going to take a minute, she's going to go lay down, and then if anybody needed her, you know, come and get her. So I'm assuming that she's going out to either a nice couch or there's a cot set up or some, some type of accommodations for this older woman who's doing these amazing things for people. Uh, to, to get herself some rest and some extra energy for her the rest of her day coming and I happened to uh, we had a, a little bit of downtime things were going smoothly and I just peeked out this one door because I wasn't sure what was out there but I kept seeing people walk out in this area and it was kind of like a restaurant type area where they had tables and chairs and they're uh, on about three wooden chairs lined up against a wall laid Sister Mary taking a nap on on Hard wood, like like barely fit half an ash cheek <laughs> on this piece of maple, and she was sprawled across three of them, uh, sleeping like a baby, trying to get a little bit of extra energy for uh, for what was coming up. But tell you what, after meeting that woman for about thirty seconds, I, I can guarantee you she didn't need any sleep that night. She would be, you know, a hundred percent the next day and ready to go because she uh, she was quite the woman. To oh say yeah. The least. Well, and, and uh, to close that out, uh, as we were leaving, so so other years I tried going all night then freshening up and going to the street with Mary because then she's got another whole shift or team of volunteers that actually serves the dinners hot to the street. Pretty powerful. Like this is one of the only events in New York City, especially in Harlem, that serves fresh, hot Thanksgiving meals on the you know the morning of Thanksgiving. So she gets to the street by you know 7, 8 a.m. and they start setting up. They have another box truck coming in. They set up all these giant tables. It's like an assembly line because then by 10 a.m., all the turkeys start getting delivered by the fire department. We have uh, makeshift grills set up there on, on this section of the street that we, we pay the city to rent for the, de for the day. Um, they have, I mean, it just becomes an assembly line because we don't, you know, give away food. We invite people of the Harlem community up to have Thanksgiving dinner with us. Just so happens, depending on the time of day. It could be that morning, it could be that lunchtime, it could be later in the afternoon. We go all day until the food is gone. So I used to go and try and do all that too. So I try to create a little life balance the past few years and say, hey, I don't see my family anymore, but can I at least get back in time? We do a, we do a rec my friends and I, we do a regular annual mountain bike ride that morning. So I, got, I came home, chopped Brian at his house, I grabbed my car, came home, and then we did our annual mountain bike ride with no sleep. And then I go to my fiance's family because they live five minutes away and spent uh, a little Thanksgiving meal with them around lunchtime. So it, it's, it's a hectic schedule. But I, it worked out great for Brian that I'm glad I changed that lifestyle shift because I can get you back so you could be with your family and spend your holiday with them as well, still high on life. 
Yeah. From everything we did. Yeah, and that, that made a, a big difference because, um, you know, I got a little girl, four-year-old uh, little girl. It's literally the air that I breathe and, you know, the holidays and stuff. I'm such a family guy, so it's very important for me to be with my family too. But it's also just as important to do these types of things that I do for people and, and about people and whatnot. So it was, it was cool that we could work out a way to make everybody happy and, and be able to have that experience. And it was, uh, it was quite a day to say the least. Well, and that inspired me about you. I got to give you a shout out again because uh, I don't have kids. So it's a little bit easier for, I, for me to make these crazy initiatives. Um, I'm always more impressed by people who have the added level of commitment of dealing with family and kids and everything else because there's, as you met, there's lots of other people who show up there and they say, you know what, I take this three to four hours out of my holiday season and I come and I work with Mary and then they leave, they come in for a few hours, they volunteer and they're out, you know, or a half a day or whatever. So there's other people out there just like you with children that they find a way to make it work in their lives. And it, it always impresses me more uh, from just seeing that happen, right? Yeah, and, and, and uh, you know, from a guy that has kids, there's, there's a big reason for that. You know, the type of stuff that I do, it's, uh, it's a lead by example. You know, even though I'm not around my kid, my kid's learning a lot about me, you know, doing that type of stuff and, and, and the types of things that make me tick. So it's actually, I'm, I'm sending my kid to school when I go away to help people and come back and, and tell her, you know, what I did and stuff. And, Hoping that when she gets older, she's right there with me doing this type of stuff and kind of carrying it on. I like the little um, that little tagline, setting your kids stuff to school. Is, uh, That's good. Like very that. important to me. Yeah. Well, I, so without further ado, the other part to inspiration of this podcast is uh, I hinted at this on some of my past episodes. I took, I think it was episode 232, 233, and 234, and I did three back to back solo episodes, which I've never done in the history of the show. And we've got now two as of today 236 shows online and i did it because it just so much good things were happening we had a lot happening with our dog calvin the coonhound so he got a special episode about his health trauma that we got through on this holiday season uh, that we're thankful for and then obviously these events so i talked about in a past episode our regular listeners are going to connect really well and that's for you because i didn't want to dig too heavily into the key words that threw out the last episode ladies and gentlemen was Stephen Seller Foundation, Tunnel to Towers, but underlying all of that, this was the morning before Thanksgiving. So we went to Staten Island Wednesday morning before going up to Harlem. And who did we go and support? A young man by the name of John Hudson Dilgen. Uh, he's on Facebook. Shout you out, can, John. You can YouTube him. Um, there's a lot of different things. One of the most impactful videos that literally was done probably within the last week or two is uh, by a gentleman that has special books for special kids I believe is the, the tagline or whatever what you can look for on Facebook and he's got a lot of different kids telling a lot of great stories and, mm. and things about um, you know the youth and, and what other people are kind of dealing with and and if you want to go there you'll, you'll learn a lot about him it's actually shot in his new home which is what we're going to talk about uh, a little backstory about John is Stumbled upon him through my aunt and uncle. My wife's aunt and uncle lives in Staten Island. Had come in contact Great through family. his, uh, yeah, Scott got to meet them as well. Um, came into contact with them through, they literally live blocks from this young man. Uh, he struggles with a skin condition called epidermolosis, or epidermolysis, sorry, bullosa, uh, EB for short. Say that five times fast, I've tried it, it doesn't work. Just yeah. go with EB. <laughs> <laughs> EB. Um, Basically, uh, what EB is, is he's missing a protein in his skin, um, I believe it's collagen 7 it's called, and in a nutshell, his skin doesn't form properly. Um, is, some, it, is, it, is it not form, or is it just not capable of healing? That's what I feel like. When I describe I, it, it looks like he's just not capable of finishing the healing process. I, no, it's, it's, it's not healing because it's damaged because it never formed right in the first place. You know, basically, oh. it doesn't have the, the glue to hold it together. Okay. So, so something as anybody that's a, a you know, kid nut, family nut, whatever, um, imagine hugging your kid hard because you love him so much and, and basically causing wounds that could possibly kill the kid. You know, it's something that that's you, you literally, if he, he bumps into being things, hugged, possibly? He'll, um, not, not really, not in how I would hug somebody. Um, yeah. You got to understand what you're doing when you're, when you're dealing with the young man and I've got to spend one on one time with him and, and uh, sitting in his house, chatting with him, done different things and. Um, racing my bike years ago, I, I, I made custom shirts and I raced for John. And, and ever since meeting him and understanding this, um, 
horrific disease that he's got. Uh, it's just been a passion of mine to, just like we're doing now, bring a lot of awareness to it. Unfortunately, you know, I've donated money. Um, that's that's really what ED needs right that's now. Why. We did that campaign last year, right? Was it? Yep. That podcast? Yeah. And there, there's the, the EB Research Partnership. Um, you can look them up on Facebook as well, and I'm sure. Uh, we'll Scott. tag it in this. I'll go back and edit this post on Facebook too and make sure that everybody's tagged so they can watch this. When, whenever I talk to him um, or anyone that has EB and, and family members and whatever, and you're, you're trying to figure out what you could possibly do to help them, um, it really is donate to that organization because they're the people that are working very hard and they, they are getting somewhere, unlike some things that people have been putting, you know, putting millions and millions into and, and beating their heads against the wall and not really getting anywhere. So things are starting to go in the right direction. Um, unfortunately, not fast enough for, mm -hmm. for some people. Um, the average life expectancy for a kid with EB is 30 years. Wow. Uh, they just lost a, a very popular um, young woman to EB who was struggling just as well, and, and she was on a lot of different things on. How online. old was she? Uh, yeah. I don't recall exactly what I saw. I've just there, seen there, her there is a life cycle on this, right? Do they claim that there's a possible age limit, so to speak? Or well, 30 is the 30 is the number. Like okay. they don't, they don't. Many of them do not make past 30. And what a lot of people don't understand too that that I, I really educated myself on this stuff a lot because it became a lot more personal. Uh, the more I got to know jo uh, John and his family, um, I've, I've seen his mom in, on vacations that we went uh, to do actually uh, Princess Half Marathon my wife ran in, yeah, in yeah, Disney the, to benefit EB. Um, so I know I know his family very personally now, and, and it, it's it doesn't just attack the outside. That's that's the worst part. If you look at the outside, which there's a lot of videos that you can go online and see, and and you see what they look like from the outside, um, it's a lot to deal with. And to understand that it's almost the same on the inside, you know, is is a, a whole different ball of wax. That's true. Admittedly, I've not dug you that deep into that either. I mean, you don't think about it, but why? Well, of course, if he's missing an essential collagen component in the skin, why wouldn't it be also an essential tissue healing? component on the in inside of the body. Yeah, right, right down to eating the wrong foods and if you swallow something like Sandorito with a sharp point or edges, you know, there's different things that can really cause a lot of different problems and yeah. a lot of the stuff that I've learned, I've actually learned from John through these videos that I've watched. Um, when I talk to him one-on-one, -on -one, I try to keep it fun and, and not, you know, I can educate myself on this stuff. There's a lot of information out there and, okay. and, and when I get a chance to sit, sit down with him personally, you know, we talk about other things that he's into, like survival stuff and knives and, and different things. This that kid collects. is really into survival stuff, guys. Like, we got to tour his new house, uh, which, again, I'll let Brian give you the backstory on that whole project. But that was why we actually did it. Uh, it was not just creating awareness for the EB Research Project, but it was also trying to create awareness for everything we're trying to do to help his old house, which mm -hmm. I didn't have any new house. But anyway, real quick, we, we got to tour his new house. And I didn't know that he was a survivalist like really inspired by survival, and I'll let Brian explain that, but we went into his room and we got to see his new bedroom, and he had an impressive knife collection, let me tell you, and whoever did the design work in the room, like created these cool little hidden compartments to, sit and show, to show off all of his knives, it, they just went above and beyond for John, and I was just inspired by whoever thought of all those things. But I'll let, I'll let, I'll let you yeah. dig deeper into that. Yeah, what we're, what we're talking about too is, um, uh, number about a year and a half ago I got involved uh, I found out that they were trying to better customize kind of retrofit his old home to better um, help him with his issues his old home I've been in it multiple times I've walked up and down every every stairwell doing a project that I did for them um, and it just had very tight areas sharp corners uh, no, no room to, one of the things they were trying to do was put a very special uh, bathtub into his space that would help with these uh, baths that he have to, has to get every other day with bleach in the water, uh, different things in these open sores, it's, it's record for the poor young man. Um, but where the Steven Siller and the Tunnel to Tower organization got involved, they were having some issues dealing with things, the expenses were getting more than what they had thought and, and they were trying to get some help. And when they came in to look at the place, they, you know, basically said to them that, that what they had was not capable of, of 
being functional for this young man. So they were not going to help them. They were not going to do what they were asking them to do. Instead, they were going to build them a whole new house. Yeah, so that, don't that's, just fix the house. Let's just go ahead and build you a whole new I mean, what? <laughs> this is a group, too, that for years has been dealing with uh, our servicemen, um, military, building custom, they call them smart homes, uh, that are customized. It's not just building a home for somebody. It's just somebody that, that may be in a wheelchair that when he opens his top cabinet doors, uh, there's a whole unit that will drop down that will bring it to him that he can get the stuff out of it, push it back up and shut the doors. You know, it just makes it more functional. Um, and that's, that's what we went to Staten Island for because I had been involved. Uh, shout out to my the company I work for, Precise Graphics out of Emmaus. They actually stepped up. I went to my manager and went to the owner uh, and his wife of the actual um, company. And we were initially going to do the entire kitchen and the cabinetry for his medical room. Yeah, that, that was going to be done yeah. in his old place. So that, that was pretty amazing for myself to have that kind of backing from the company that I work for. Um, and we ended up not having to do that because, uh, you know, an amazing company stepped up and, and actually built the entire home. And, and this was also, I think it's important to note, I noted before on the last <laughs> episode, was they had never helped a civilian, right? This was their first project for a non-first responder, veteran, et cetera, right? Correct. Yeah. That, that I'm aware of. Yeah. Um, a little while back, uh, I, I destroyed my knee, so I haven't been running and doing a lot of the things that I was doing uh, in the past. Um, that's a whole other podcast. We'll get back into what, <laughs> what I'm doing. But um, I, I tore my ACL and then horrifically wrecked my bike in, in Vermont about five months after a major surgery with screws and bolts in my leg. And I really wasn't supposed to be on my bike, let alone going to Vermont. Of Wait, all you, places. You, you chose to do something that you weren't supposed to do after the doctor told you not to do it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've never done that. And uh, <laughs> when, when I hit the dirt in Vermont, I had... Uh, stones and all sorts of stuff jammed into my knee brace I was wearing so it just it just created a bad, <laughs> a bad time um, but uh, talking about the house when when they had you know stepped up to do all this we weren't going to do what we had offered to do because we didn't need to so I had later been I'm a carpenter do a lot of woodworking and and enjoy it and I was asked by uh, Faye his John's mom to they were going to rip off a piece of wood from their old house, and they wanted custom frames made to put a picture of John in and give to the, the Siller Foundation people. Yeah, they were like uh, door jam moldings, right? Or like door moldings? Yeah, so instead of having somebody else being a woodworker and being into that stuff and having very little time to make this all happen, I decided to, uh, I found out when they were waking up the next day, and I love a road trip, and I'm crazy like uh, the next guy. And, so I, I drove, drove up to drive. We're, <laughs> we're meant to become. It, 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 we're building an unofficial podcasting bromance. Just throwing that out there. <laughs> um, so I drove to Staten Island the following day of this phone call and walked around this young man's house until I found a, a piece of wood that, that I thought would work, and I ripped the trim right off the wall of an attic door and, and uh, took it back to my my work, and we created these beautiful frames that that went to uh, the Stephen Siller guys and. Some of the yeah, again, more reason why to shout out to his company again because this goes back to the theme of the episode, the inspiration, right? The motivation to get people to do things. Like he needed to find time in his busy schedule to take all these door moldings and turn them into these amazing frames, uh, you know, that were going to be given back, right? And then he, he ends up bringing up at his work, and <clears> your <throat> boss basically said. We got to kind of mess with you, kind of screw you a little bit, right? Didn't he like yeah, that, make you think you're going to do some annoying project? I walked in the, the first morning and had the wood, and I don't have time to do this outside of my... I work a 40-hour work week. I do side jobs out the wazoo, and and uh, to say I hustle is, is an understatement. And, you know, then with my family stuff, there, there just wasn't enough time in the day, you know, short of working through the night to get this stuff done. So I took the wood into work, and what I do for different things like this is I work straight through, like, my lunch break. So instead of getting to sit down during my 10-hour day... You know, I keep working on something that I'm doing like this. Well, I had talked to my boss, my supervisor that morning, Kevin, and he had said in the beginning of the day, went to another gentleman and said, if you don't have anything for Brian right away, because I got a project for him, and I thought it was going to be something fairly shitty. And, and uh, <laughs> he looks at me, and, and the guy said, no, because if you got something for him, I got to get something ready. And he goes, all right. He looks at me, he says, go start those frames. So that was that was pretty po uh, powerful to me that. You know, on my regular work day, he was going to let me go over and I put an hour or two into getting things started and everything was done at that place. And anything that I needed for it, um, the, the, the glass, which oh, is yeah, the acrylic, the, glass, and everything, the, yeah. 
the, the, the backer for it that John wrote on and personalized them to everyone that got it. Everything that went into that outside of the frame and my time um, came from from uh, Precise too. That, you know, they were part yeah. of a good good group of guys. I think it's cool because like no, not every business or company is perfect out there. Just like not all of us. Are, there's no such thing as perfection. The whole point is we're always striving to improve ourselves. And I was inspired by that because you know in the end as a business, right? A business needs to succeed so it can help its employees and its team members also succeed and pay their salaries, etc. But they still said, hey man, it's only a couple of hours, it's the holiday season. They knew this initiative mattered to you. Uh, they already got pulled off of the project, right, because they're, the, you know, the kid's getting a whole new house. So it was cool that they still didn't back completely off and said, you know what, we're not doing that anymore. But at least we could do is give them a couple of hours to bang out these amazing memorials. So, yeah. yeah. And I had asked even about other things in the past, like there, <coughs> I was asked I might be going up and doing some custom shelves in, in an area in this house. and. And uh, Perfe talked to me about it, and I was talking to, to that same supervisor, Kevin, about some things, and he basically said, you know, you just let me know if whatever you need, um, you know, I could get the material and stuff like that, they're, they're going to step up and, and help out with that. And, and Faye, all this stuff that's being given her, she, she fights, kicks and screams with me every time that, you know, she has me do stuff, because she does not ask me to do these things for free, and she always offers to pay and wants to pay, and is very, very serious about that, um, and it's, it's just not going <laughs> and, I, and I've met Faye. I was uh, extremely impressed by her. That woman is a saint. I mean, um, really, right? And then some. She's I on the board of the UGB Research she Partnership. Um, she she is a, a doctor of physical therapy. Some, something I think it's a doctor of physical therapy. Uh, she works for the Heart and Stance Group. They they literally work on Broadway show dancers and things of that sort. And she just. She cares for people from the, the moment her eyes open in the morning to the moment the eyes close to go to bed at night. Like, that's just what she does. It's what she was put here to do. Yeah, I, I, I was actually, I think I said this on our road trip back, or maybe it was during the night when we were doing the Street Corner Gourmet's event after you brought me to this amazing experience. And I was just reflecting on the fact that, you know, sometimes things are meant to happen in life, or people are meant to come together. And I, I don't know if they've ever thought about this way, but I said, you know, if, you know, if John was going to be born with this condition no matter what, right? And he was going to have to fight through this and be the inspiration that he is living with EB, you couldn't have asked for a more perfect mom. Because of her background, her training, everything she knows, I mean, she, she literally got to consult and give the feedback to design his new medical therapy room in his house that they built, right? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's... She's been very involved with it, um, not not just you know fighting for her kid, but fighting for every kid that's got the horrific disease EB, and and um, she she takes time out of her day. She I got to know her a little bit better, and she got to know me a lot better with this knee issue that I had, and I was struggling pretty hard for the past year with this year and a half, and I went down to New York City and actually met with her. She she contacted me, would constantly check in, ask me questions. This woman's got more things going on than you could ever possibly imagine. <laughs> And she contacted me every other day. You know, she saw something going on, on Facebook, asked me questions, gave me tips, invited me down to New York City uh, to go talk to her. When I came down, she set up an appointment for me to meet with uh, a Dr. Rose, who, who's, uh, you know, like the best of the best in the city, he works on those Broadway dancers and does knee replacements and all that type of stuff. Wow. Another thing that stands out with her recently that, that you know, I just couldn't, couldn't imagine, like, the, this is just the way she is, but... Days after Thanksgiving, she had given me one of the pictures, both for myself and, and for uh, the gentleman that helped do the frames at work, uh, that Kevin that I mentioned before. And, and that Monday when I went back to work, I gave Kevin his picture and it sits on his desk now and kind of his inspiration and stuff throughout the day. And, and But Monday afternoon, like this woman doesn't have enough things going on. She, she just got a home. Um, she's dealing with her son. She's dealing with a job. She's got all this different stuff. And she texted me during the day and just wanted to make sure that, she, that I got that picture to Kevin. That's pretty and, cool. You know, I just blown away that, that she, she just doesn't stop. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, I, I'm still, there's so many variables that this podcast has just blown me away. I mean, that you got people like Mary Lanning, people like Faye, uh, hashtag Supermom, um, organizations like the, the Tunnel to Towers, right, the, 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 and real quick, let's give a quick background for the people watching. This is no joke. 
one of the newest, most inspiring foundations that I've stumbled across, but I can't believe I didn't know about them because I have a lot of business contacts in New York. And ever since your event, I ask if people know about them and everybody knows about them. So I feel like an idiot because I didn't know about them. And mm -hmm. me being a former firefighter, granted I was wildland, this stemmed from the powerful impacts of 9-11 and Stephen Siller, who was a fallen FDNY firefighter. I mean, what's a quick background on that? Yeah, I guess it used to be called the Battery Tunnel, but he was coming into 9-11 and going to the towers, and and uh, don't don't quote me on all the logistics of this, but to, in a nutshell, um, you know, with the traffic and this, that, whatever, he could not get there, so he had to grab his tons of gear, put it on his back, and, and he ran, you know, the the basically what turned into a 5K, the, the Tunnel to Towers run that they, they hold for a huge fundraiser for this, and he ran into the city and... and you know, did his part and ended up passing away, like the thousands of people through the 9-11. And, and we just went... Yeah, he had just made it to the tower, <coughs> the second tower, I think, when, when that tower then... He got in there, obviously, and then it collapsed. Yeah. So that's how he lost. If, if you're looking for a, a powerful event, then all the money goes to something about as amazing as it gets. The uh, Tunnel to Towers do their Stephen Siller 5K event. And I went in, even though I couldn't run, and walked it, and it was... Legit, right? Yeah. Unbelievable. Yeah. I mean, he, he described this to me, and I understand why he's getting a little choked up. It, I, I, I want to go do this with you guys, because they actually have you, like, load up in the tunnel. Well, right? it's, it's right before the tunnel. One of the, one of the most inspirational parts that really hit home and was very tough to kind of watch was they have, like, huge flat screens set up okay. every half a block for I don't know how many blocks to the start of the thing because it goes off in waves. There's tons of people awesome. and they're showing all the stuff that they do, you know, all the houses for these people and stuff. Oh, so each flash screen, I see, I thought they were just showing the event. They're actually giving no, you the nothing to do with the event. They're, the they're showing families. you what they do with your money that, that oh, you awesome. put into that thing. Yeah. Um, so you see the, the service people that are getting it. You see the, the main guys um, speaking and talking. You know where they come from and stuff. Uh, during the event, you see people running with all their, their gear on, um, service people, policemen, a group of Marines went through the tunnel that was, you know, till this day, just, it was an amazing. You hear their chanting and the echoing. Yeah, yeah, it, was, yeah. it was great. And then you come out of the tunnel, you think it's bad enough, um, you think you can't take anymore, and they have uh, a couple of thousand police officers standing there with the, these big banners on them, uh, a picture of every person that, that was lost, you know, lost their life in 9-11, uh, in and, and it, it is, unbelievably powerful um, event. Yeah, I mean, I got chills him talking about it right now, not just because it's really cold out and it's winter time and I'm in, I'm in my center block building garage, <laughs> but, and I have heaters going, uh, but it's, like normal to me. it's, yeah, I know, it feels good actually, actually, I love this time of year. So, but it's, when you, when you talk about stuff like this, uh, when you have something that hits you and it gives you that chill or that shudder, I love to slow down and just appreciate that. Think it's a pretty I, I almost, it was funny in a way, you, you know, and you, you, your glass is either half full or it's half empty, but uh, I, I looked at my walking in that event. That's the first running event I'd ever been in my life that I actually walked. There was no reason for me to go to running events anymore um, with the knee situation stuff I deal with, but walking, you know, I really got to soak it all in and, and really see what went on around me. And it, it was amazing. Like, it was extremely powerful. Um, I'm sure for, for someone that doesn't have family in New York like I do, it's got to be a complete and total pain in the ass to try to get in and out of there. Um, certainly contact me if you want to try to do it, and I'll be happy to help and, and, and you know figure out the logistics. I'm going to go ahead and commit. Out. We should, um, let's, let's, let's join up. <clears throat> let's create a little group or whatever on Facebook that we have to, or whatever's got to be done, but the next event, let's go do that. Because, it, I mean, granted, you and I are already talking about going, doing some endurance sports related uh, themed uh, promotion. But it doesn't need to be a big event. I mean, to be fair, the way this sounds, it's big based on population, love, and passion, you know, for the New York area. And I, I'm always reminded about this little statement is that, especially here in the U.S., depending on your age, everybody who is old enough to live through and hear, watch, or be aware or personally affected by 9-11 knows where they were. And so... I take a personal attention to these events that have stemmed off of that tragedy because 
we need to be reminded about you. This is how you turn negative, terrible tragedies into positive, you know, inspiration. I mean, look at the, this powerful event that chokes you up. I'm like, we need to get more people to go up there and do that because, especially now that I have a personal connection to John and his family, who have benefited from these this amazing organization. I love it. Yeah, they, they not only just built him a home, but one of the things in his home, he really was very immobile. He had a he had a chair that took him from the first level to the second level. Yeah, he had one of those, um, and for the video watchers, like those, I don't want, pardon the term, elderly care chairs. You know, you know, you know, not like, like on a chair sits rail. On a rail that yeah. runs up the side of the steps. Yeah, and, and if you have square footage issues or older homes like he had, like the hallways are very narrow. I mean, this kid, his knees would would rub if he didn't pay attention on the wall. Yeah. And he can't afford that. So in his new home, uh, three-story place, they, they actually put in an elevator. Yeah, this kid's uh, got an elevator, guys. This house is smart as heck, by the way. He has access to everything. Everything can be handled through his house, through uh, um, iPads. He has his own, his very own iPad that runs everything from his house, or from his bedroom. Um, he can, uh, uh, smart appliances, so like to open doors and things. He's got issues with his hands, and if you watch some of the videos, you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But he, he, his hands are, are almost kind of webbed together just because of the amount, the lack of moving that he's done with them because of the damage that it does. And he can literally push a button, hit it with his knuckle, and it will drop them down for him. Um, he actually cooked for the first time in his life uh, at, at six, 16? Is it 16? Yeah, 16 now. Um, he cooked for well, the first time in his life in his new home. Oh, and dude, we missed they had, that. They had something with a with a video, and his mom was talking about and showed him like actually cooking something, which he never was able to, just wow. because he can't grab the ovens and pull things down. He can't do that type of stuff. Yeah. So it, it just gave him a lot of freedom that, that he never had, uh, you know, which is great for, for someone like this. What anybody that watches this video, you know, you, you cannot. This kid, this kid, powerful inspiration. I want to see this kid like write a book, <laughs> or or you, you, or you just can't, you cannot not become his biggest fan. Like it's, yeah. it's almost impossible. Yeah, I mean it's, and, and guys, I, I, after this, because we're actually Facebook living this podcast right now, so I'm gonna make sure Brian afterwards comments on the feed with a couple of videos about John. Um, I, I cause then, and when this podcast airs uh, in the next two weeks, I'm gonna make sure we embed some of those YouTube videos in the, the blog content on the website because he's not kidding guys. Like when you see some of the videos of what John has been through through his childhood, it's, it's, it's shocking. Um, that kid inspires me just based on his pain threshold. And I've done a lot of hard stuff in my life. I self promote crap all the time. I'm the adrenaline junkie, blah, blah, blah. But this kid has got me beat. I mean, there's a video that's been up for a few years, that one, pretty bottle, where he was, they filmed him what he normally has to go through for bathing and, and you know, sterilizing his body at his old house. Yeah. And I, I'm telling you guys, it's, his, it's graphic. His dad said in a recent video um, that, that Special Books for Special Kids, which really, you know, has both his mom and dad talking, his, his sister talked, uh, he has a brother, he wasn't on that one. Um, but his dad said he believes he's covered at this point. He's something, he, he's about 80% skinless. Is basically, you know, the, where where he's gotten to this point. Um, you know, it's, so it's it, actually gotten worse. Yeah, it's it's been getting a lot worse. Uh, you know, over the past couple of years since probably the first I met him. One of the first things that I did for him was, you know, I asked his mom, once you meet the kid, like all you want to do is something for him. And the problem is you can't even do anything for him because he's so limited in what he does. So one of the things being a woodworker that I, w I had the ability to do was he had just gotten Dash. Uh, Dash is his, um, his, his therapy dog. dog. Therapy dog, yeah. So can do a lot of Great really dog. neat things for him. One of the cool things that he can do is Dash can actually go get his mom. If he's, if he's hurt, if he's got something going on, Dash will go alert his mom that, that he needs she needs to get to John. Uh, but there's a lot of different things that this dog does. But I made a really cool uh, Dash Diligent custom dog feeder, like a dog bowl. Oh, that's cool. And I made oak steps. He's Dash has some of the nicest pair of steps that you could ever have to get up into John's bed because he always wanted to sleep with John and, and come up into bed. But just just the dog jumping up and hitting John, you know, they needed a way that he could get up there yeah. without hurting him. So. And well, and thanks to this new house, so you built those steps before the new house, right? 
Yeah, yeah, that was that was a long time ago. So now, did they did they bring them over to the new house? Because now that he's got that big bedroom, those steps are even more beneficial because it's always even easier to get up on those. I, I would certainly think. I hope they did. Yeah. Um, I would certainly think that they that they would. But well, that day we were there, they literally was the first time. I like, part of this story, guys. Like we literally the Wednesday before Thanksgiving was the house unveiling, the house dedication. We got to see, you know, John and his family get surprised with their new home. They hadn't. They weren't supposed to have been able to see it. I'm sure well, his, his, I think his time. mom and dad might have been in just to help with different things. Yeah. Um, but John, it was the very first time yeah. he's seen it. He drove by it. He knew it had a red door out front. That was uh, one of his comments. Yeah. Um, he didn't. He hadn't seen it at all. Yeah. And and John and Johnny. Uh, actually, I post. I gotta go back and find the video on my Facebook feed. I posted a video, a live feed from the house dedication ceremony with John uh, speaking because, again, this kid got choked up. I mean. The biggest thing that I, I want to make sure came up on this episode was, again, not just about his mom, but I want to tie this into his whole family, is that John is selfless. He knows that so many people, especially his family, have sacrificed so much for the lifestyle impacts that he has. And so his own family has had to make the sacrifices to be there for him. His older sister, his older brother, were living in a... a, a um, the, the house was an house, like an attic, an attic space. Like they couldn't even sit up in their own beds because <clears throat> of just they had a small home and, and they needed to give John as much space as they could. So it's just his family has sacrificed so much and John spoke nothing but the highest words possible. Yeah, I've, I've probably stuff. watched multiple times and damn near studied every video the kid has out and he never gets emotional talking about himself. I've never seen him get upset or cry. He always does when he talks about his family. Yeah. I mean, that, that's selfless, man. I love it. I love it. I mean, it's, again, it's, it's just, I, this, is where I, this is where I knew the show was going to go. I wanted to make sure we really tapped into these, these holiday-inspired inspirations. And um, I'm thinking you're doing that, man. We're both getting a little choked up. <laughs> <laughs> well, anybody goes back with the past things, I'm a choked up kind of guy. But uh, yeah. I, I got passion coming out of every orifice I got. <laughs> it's to true. To the point that I have uh, an inability to turn it off. Um, not that I would ever want to, but uh, some of the things in the future, hopefully we'll, we'll get back into doing this a little bit more uh, with some of my nutty adventures and, uh, you know, following the kind of live the fuel lifestyle, if you will. Um, we'll, we'll talk about some different events and some things. I, I'm, I'm going to leave some stuff for some other talks down the road, but there's a couple of things that I got going on that I'm trying to get myself back in shape. I, a little back, back story was I, I was going out to do an event that I had set out to do once before and had failed, got pulled about 40 some miles into 101 mile. Um, that was that endurance mountain bike run, right? Wilderness 101. Wilderness yeah. 101. And uh, I got pulled from doing this, this crazy event. Um, I was going back with a vengeance, uh, following a, a totally different nutritional um, lifestyle, if you will, and, and was working hard. I lost a ton of weight. I was, literally, I came home and I had a conversation with my wife and said, you know, I'm riding my bike right now better than I, I possibly could have been uh, ever in my life. And I, I was so on the road to, to going back and finishing what I started and helping my stepson with some soccer stuff. He was trying to make it onto the Freedom Soccer Team. I literally, if I took a vertical jump of about two inches, that was it, to catch a soccer ball on an Easton turf field, uh, playing ball with him. I came down and it, and it literally felt like my leg snapped in half. Oof. And that was the beginning of the end. Uh, that was my ACL that tore in half. I went flat to my back, was moaning for a little bit until I could stop. And and uh, my son comes over, my stepson, he's he just wondering, you know, what the hell's going on. And, and uh, you know, I was afraid to even look at my leg from the pain and what was going on. And, and yeah, like, oh my God, you're like, you know, did it go through the skin or something? Yeah, right? yeah, literally. I thought it was like a compound fracture. Like, it's literally what it felt like. So um, then when I calmed down, because I'd, I'd been in enough mountain bike accidents and knocked myself out, put my face in the trees and everything else. That I, I can under I know how to handle stuff like that as sad as it is, um, and I just you know focused on my breathing, calmed myself down, and sat up, looked at my leg, everything was fine, stood up and and could put pressure on it, but that was kind of the beginning of a of a horrific you know year and a half again. We all know I struggle from the neck up a lot with different things, and, and it just became you know really hard to to motivate myself when I couldn't even walk right. And, and I went through surgery and then I went through all sorts of different issues. Now I've been to so many different therapists and stuff. And I'm literally, you know, right now able to be back on my bike. Uh, coming in here today, I just was out um, for a little over an yeah, hour. Yeah, patio. 
it was like 26 degrees or something like that and I'm back out on my bike doing what I love to do so um, I'm, I'm taking that type of stuff that I'm I'm proud of and and, and you know what I love to do and, and using it to kind of raise awareness for this EV stuff that's now become such a such a passion and I'm, I'm just the guy next door you know there's nothing special about me I'm not going to go out and win anything but I got a big mouth and I love talking about stuff that uh, that means something to me and you know I want to bring awareness to this the best I can. That's why I want you on the show more man. You, uh, we, if you were given the gift of gab uh, as you hinted at big mouth like myself um, let's at least use it for something to create positive change right because there's a lot of people out there that do care a lot and they do donate money or they donate their time but they've not been blessed with the gift of gab. So I tell people all the time, like, let's channel your strengths into something that creates positive change. So like you, something as simple as you starting this initiative to increase your training, that's why you got the fat bike. You want to be able to start riding year round to build up your training, to build up your reconditioning. Because again, I've said this many times in the show, you're looking to put in the reps because you're building to something bigger, you're building to something greater. And then eventually, how cool would it be to have like a, uh, like an EB bike jersey with like Saucon Valley bikes because they've been a big supporter of you yeah, and like put the fuel on Strauss there and then we, we put Strausser product on there and then we, you know, doing it for Johnny or whatever. But then next, you know, you're doing the Wilderness 101 or other athletic events where that's all you're doing. That, that's what gives you life balance. You keep doing, you know, your job, you keep doing your side hustles, you keep building a successful family, you keep doing these other non profit activities, but now you take our lifestyles, like mountain biking, that's how you and I met, and you channel that energy just by simply going and doing an event and wearing a jersey representing John and, and the EB. Like that's that's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, it's it's great. And, and and the nice thing, like the, the good and the bad of it is, it's such a horrific thing that all you need to do is turn people onto it, and people can't help but but get involved. And even if it's you know nobody's got to cook all night long in Harlem uh, to to serve two thousand homeless people. But even, you know, the smallest things mean a lot when, when they're compiled into the, you know, thousands of people. You get enough people that know what's going on and that does their little part becomes a big, a big help in, in a situation like this. Yeah, that's kind of the big underlying theme of this whole episode is I wanted to make sure, you know, Brian talked a lot about everything that's been transpired really in the past, really it's almost two years, right, of you being involved with John and at least getting me involved and um, obviously my years of work with you know Mary these are two big big powerful stories that we shared today but it doesn't have to be the big powerful story that's what, we're, that's what we're both talking about here is that if these types of stories inspire you to create your own small little shift work find, find a local you know food kitchen or a local charity or maybe you want to go and support the big ones. I mean, years ago, I did major 150-mile you know, road cycling events for MS-150 for like five, six years because I had a cousin with ALS, and there was no big ALS organizational event. So I, and as a bike wearer, I decided to donate my time and money to MS. Like, whatever. Uh, find what, I said this many times, find what fuels your fire. Because if you're taking all that energy <coughs> that many of us are lacking, but you all of a sudden find this new source of energy, the only way you're gonna keep that energy sustained is if it's truly aligned with something you truly give a shit about. Here, here's an awesome story too, and I'll even dumb it down to something even smaller. Like you, you know, you don't even need to find the organization, the event, the this, that, you, you can just find the person. Um, kind of like the awesome story and how you bumped into Mary in the first place to do what you're doing and now having done it for so many years. Uh, side story that literally happened, um, 24 hours ago, I had a side job yesterday. I was putting, uh, I met a, a woman and this kid who had cerebral palsy. And when I met him, um, you know, and, and got to know his mom, she she just loved me, hook, line, sinker, because of the things I was doing around the house. He really took an interest into talking with me and kind of hanging out with me. And, and again, having that gift of gab, you know, and, and loving people and, and seeing somebody that's going through some stuff again, I want to talk to him, you know, I want to I lift him up and help him out. So long story short, I learned that he was actually from Russia. His kid's from Russia. He was adopted and brought over. His family didn't want him because of his, his illness. Wow. He was horrifically treated as a young man in Russia until this woman has adopted him and brought him to the States. He had no schooling until the year of nine and a half years old, um, where he went to kindergarten wow. in, in, uh, and has since graduated from freedom. 
Um, and after being over there multiple times, now when I come to the door, I swear they find me things to fix so this kid that you know, I can hang out with him. He comes over and was hanging out with me yesterday, and, and uh, we got talking, I found out he's real into the outdoors. He loves being outside. And, and uh, you know, I was thinking since the last time I was there, I came over and said, John, his name's John also. And I said, how are you in the water? Because I don't know 100%, you know, cerebral palsy, I, didn't, I haven't researched enough this, that, whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, how are you in the water? Are you safe in the water? Can you? And he said, as long as I have the life vest, you know, he's fine. Um, I said, you ever been in a kayak before? He's like, oh, no, I'd love to be in a kayak. He goes, he used to be part of the Boy Scouts. And then this whole thing opened up through this conversation out of nowhere. Wow. And he sounds like a, you know, a mini me. Well, here this kid is really into the outdoors. He used to camp and stuff. So long story short, I said, you know, I'm, I'm a man of my word. If I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. So I said, next year, I said, we got Jim Thorpe right down the road. I'm going to take him. We're going to go up. And he also likes fishing. He's got some fishing stuff and everything. So I'm going to take this kid for a day uh, who's 90% confined to his house, doesn't really go anywhere and do a whole lot. They go to church every week. Yeah. Um, he has trouble just getting around and, and whatever. But I'm going to take him out. I promised him at least a day we're going to go up. And we'll really be two days. We're going to go up and maybe Friday or Saturday, stay overnight. I'm going to camp in tents and stuff and we really got into that even last year and, Sweet. and uh, taking fishing and doing some stuff and you know something like that you, you take the time for one person it's amazing what that'll do for yeah them. you know like I love people. people so I'm cool. gonna do something really cool with him I want to take my kids up Is there the same kid you were hinting about doing a bike project with or something no that's another another young man I'm, I'm <laughs> that working <keep> with <laughs> Um, there's a there's a website that I use called Nextdoor. And people find me to do my uh, my carpentry work and home repairs all and stuff stuff like that. Yeah. All, and, all your Strasser projects. <laughs> yeah, and uh, so I was I came home one day and my wife, you know, it was kind of funny the way she was bringing this to me. She goes, I wasn't gonna say anything to you because I know I know how you are and I know you'll like jump on it right away. You got so much going on as it is. You know, she didn't want to add something to my plate, but she just knew how interested I would be. She said, but I noticed something on that next door site. And as soon as she said that, I said, you're talking about the, the young man with uh, autism? Yeah. And she goes, yep. I said, I already contacted him. I'm meeting with him and his parents on Monday. <laughs> <laughs> I he, I uh, he was struggling with his weight and some different things. And, and if you follow my backstory, I, I, I've been 328 pounds, gone from there uh, to an endurance athlete and had two multiple... Uh, two different um, training certifications and stuff. So I've been around the block when it comes to, I know what it's like to lose over 100 and some pounds and, and get in the best shape of my life. And yeah. I know what it's like to struggle and, and play the, the roller coaster of life um, issues and, and things like that. So, you know, me being on the, the upswing, I said, you know, it'd be a good time for me to talk to this gentleman and, and see if I can't help him. And, and he's a teenager in high school, dealing with a lot of stuff and got a lot of struggles and this, that, whatever. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna do some of my outdoor therapy with that young man as well, and get him into you know finding things that are fun to get away from the damn video games and trying to help him figure out what to eat better. And well, dude, you, you've you've hinted at it multiple times towards the end of the show that uh, <laughs> we you don't have an excuse now. You have to keep coming back on for regular updates because uh, you got too much happening like me. <clears throat> and even if there's not a ton of massive shift happening, I think it's important for people to. Keep that journey flowing, right? And keep that movement flowing. And sometimes it might be as simple as you hopping on and doing a podcast because I want to make sure this platform can at least help grow the Strausser Project influence. Even if it's not, if nothing else, these stories that you're impacting or being involved with or teaming up on are creating more positive shifts for people. And they can say, great, I love what he's doing there. I love that. You know what? I know somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody. And next thing you know, uh, this go it just all of a sudden it's popped in my head. There's that movie or that... There was a movie about, what was it called, Pass It On or something like that, where you do one good thing and then you have to pass it on. Like, that's what like we need to be doing more of in this world. Yeah. Paying it forward. Paying it forward, thank you. So my, my wife said to me, I was, I was upset and I, I, I get choked up just about everything. I was sitting there at the table on a probably a Friday night and I was upset at the table. I was watching one of those stories about John and she goes, I don't know why you do this to yourself. You know, why you get like so upset and <coughs> whatever and watch these things. And I said, the problem is, my wife's name's Jean. I said, the problem is, Jean. I said, you don't understand. I'm not getting upset. You know, it's you get fired up. I'm, I'm, it motivates me. Yeah, yeah. You know, it gives you an appreciation, uh, truly, of what you've got. And I find a lot of times with just people in general, 
Um, you know, so many people spend so much time bitching about all the wrong stuff and really not even having a clue as to what they've been given. Mm -hmm. um, and I just choose not to waste that. No, I love that. And that, actually, that's a great way to bring the show to a close too, is because uh, we got to make sure we get Brian back on again to do more updates. But I like his his other comments just now, which is, you know, guys, it, it's we, especially here in North America, in the U.S. of A. We have so many things to be thankful for, and now we're recording this after Thanksgiving. But I don't care if it's Thanksgiving, if it's Christmas, if it's Kwanzaa, if it's you know whatever your holiday. Maybe you don't celebrate any holiday. My whole point is there's enough negative energy in this world that will bring mankind down. So it takes people like Brian and all of these organizations to fight against that and bring us to, I feel, the place we need to be as mankind in, in this world or whether we're influencing other worlds that we don't even know about, whatever it may be. It's like, guys, like, you have a choice. Live in the negative or live in the positive. And Trust me, I fight with this too. Even though I'm very driven like Brian, to push motivational, inspirational content. It's not always, you know, you're, you're, uh, my glass sometimes drops below half full. <clears throat> I'm, I'm human. But the reason why we put in these reps is so we catch that sooner and we stop it and we fight against that and we build ourselves back up. And that's why you get choked up. That's why you, 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 you work and, and you watch videos like John this is why we do all this, guys. It's one of the inspirations behind me launching with the fuel so many years ago and then creating the podcast is we all have a choice. And I luckily have a gift of gab and I have no problem telling you. So <laughs> ergo, live the fuel podcast. Ergo, me eventually meeting a guy like Brian over chainsaws and mountain biking. I mean, you never know where these inspiring relationships start and where they could go. And I'm excited to have you as an ambassador for Live the Fuel, man. It's just, and I'm glad that, you know, you're, you're looking to commit more in 2019, and I'm excited to help get your voice out there. Sweet. Yeah. So listen, you're the guest co-host. <coughs> How would you like to close out the show, man? Final words. Um, I'll probably keep it with the, uh, the Thanksgiving theme. Um, just, just end it with something simple. Uh, give more than you get. You know, there's, there's something special happens. I'll finish this. <laughs> you know, something special happens when when you have the opportunity to do that kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> this year, I probably made triple the amount of money I made last year. Uh, my side hustle and, and some things I've started doing with my carpentry and my skill set and, and, and my level of commitment to, to taking care of you know my family, and whatever, is, is through the roof and. The, the money I've made doesn't mean shit to me. Um, thinking about <clears throat> think, thinking about this kid, you know, and the stuff that, that I have the ability to do for him, that's where it's at. And I haven't made 25 cents doing it. So, um, you know, I just want to end it, unfortunately, with the, uh, the, the normal Strauss uh, emotion. But uh, give, give more than you get because... It, it, it comes back to you in a way that you can't even understand until you've been there. I love it. Listen, guys. He hit it. Give more than you get. And there is truth to this flow of energy, the flow state, the universe, however you want to describe it, the law of attraction. Dude, it's legit, guys. Okay? Give more than you get. It will come back to you. The only difference between myself and somebody else is I've been putting in the reps longer. To, to be able to start realizing it now. That's the other part of this equation is it takes time. You don't expect to like support a new charity like tomorrow and then you feel like a million bucks and, and, your, and your world has changed next week. Sorry guys, this is just like anything else in life. Building a business, building entrepreneurship, building true love, building a family, <coughs> or in this case, trying to shift into a more positive state. You have to put in the reps. Give more than you get and the universe will come back to you. Truly believe that. So again, thanks for tuning in to another powerful, holiday-themed, totally inspiring Thanks to the Strausser Project, Live the Fuel podcast show. We're here to fuel your health, your business, and your lifestyle. So thanks for tuning in. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Thank you, Scott.
Well, thanks, live fans. Thanks for hanging out. And I knew Strauss would get a little emotional because I could count <laughs> on him for that. He's a big, hairy man, uh, and he's tied into his balanced emotion. That's your fire. That's your fire. So I love that, man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank that. you. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out. Stay uh, I'm going to get back to working. Coming. Later. More information coming.